I'm Roger with Roger's Outdoor Channel. Today I'd like to talk to you about salmon recovery, uh, specifically Washington State, uh, even more specifically the Lake Washington watershed area. Um, I've got a very strong background in, uh, in salmon and salmon recovery. I've, uh, for 25 years, I've uh, worked out of the Issaquah Hatchery. Uh, you know, I've been a master docent there, there for many years, uh, taking kids around on tours, uh, t talking about the life cycle. Uh, I help them harvest the fish. Uh, in the fall, late fall, I'll go back to the hatchery and pick up salmon eggs and take them out to 10 different streams that I manage and uh, uh, to remote incubators and release maybe up to $100,000 uh, salmon. Uh, for them to uh, start their their uh, life journey. Um, I uh, also am on several committees with uh, Fish and Wildlife, uh, the Native American tribes, the Seattle uh, Public Utilities, etc. I mean, I'm involved with it, so and I uh, uh, got a strong background. So right now, the the salmon in Washington State are doing just terrible, especially the sockeye, uh, and. What uh, primarily the, the reason the stock eye are doing as bad as they are is uh, uh, to give you an example at the Isagon Hatchery with Chinook and Coho, uh, you know, all, all salmon basically are genetically programmed to live their first year in fresh water uh, and then the balance of their life in salt water until they come back to, to spawn. And the, at the Isaquah Hatchery, we take the coho and the chinook, and we keep them in uh, raceways and safe areas, raceways, ponds, uh, uh, and we feed them and put up nets to keep them away from predators, etc. And after a year, we'll release them into uh, the Lake Sammamish. They go out to Lake Washington, and they go out through the Ship Canal, uh, Hiram. Chittenden locks uh, out to salt water and return in three or four years. So, you know, we've done that for years and, uh, and, it, and it works. Enough salmon are able to, if we protect them for that first year, enough of them are able to return uh, that uh, we continue to be able to propagate the, the species at the hatchery. Uh, for some reason, when they built the Cedar River hatchery for uh, sockeye, they decided, no, we're just going to, as soon as the, the eggs hatch, we're going to release them into the Cedar River and, and uh, let them make their life journey there. And they released, you know, 25, 30 million eggs uh, to start with. And, uh, uh, you know, and the first couple of years, they uh, you know, had reasonable returns, but not enough for a fishery. Uh, and, uh, and it's been going downhill really fast ever since then. So what's happening is that, uh, you know, the, the sockeye smolt are, you know, the, the predators are finding them in the lake. You know, after a couple of years, it's kind of like, ah, first of June, uh, set, set, the, set the watch, uh, the sockeye are coming, let's go eat them. And, uh, and every fish in the lake, uh, you know, not every fish, but a lot of them, um, you know, kind of line up and, and uh, you know, the, the bass, the perch, the cutthroat trout, the northern pike minnow, etc. Uh, you know, they really chow down on these things, you know, and, and for a year and a half they follow them around the lake and, and just uh, keep eating until they're full. Um, and, you know, so what, what we need to do is, you know, A, <coughs> the first thing is to protect them for that uh, uh, that first year uh, and build some facilities, uh, you know, raceways, etc., like we do for Chinook and, and Coho. So the second thing is we need to uh, reduce some of the predation in Lake Washington. And I fished the lake a lot. Uh, you know, last summer, as an example, from the middle of July, I kept records, from the middle of July until the, the end of September, uh, I personally took over 500 warm water species fish out of the lake. Uh, that's bass, uh, you know, large mouth, small mouth, uh, uh, rock bass, uh, crappie, perch, a lot of perch, mostly perch, uh, etc. Bluegill, uh, a few of those. Uh, and, uh, and there's literally millions of fish in there, and they're big! You know, I mean, you're gonna want to catch them. So, you know, the first thing you could do to help this, this uh, sockeye thing is go out there and fish Lake Washington. 
catch some of these fish. They're they're wonderful eating. The uh, cold water type thing keeps them nice, firm flesh, uh, and just really tasty. Uh, the next thing, next problem that the sockeye have is when they start coming back, they come up to the uh, the locks from the other side, from the saltwater side, and it takes them a while to you know to to smell the water coming in from Lake Washington that comes down the fish ladder, and so they're kind of circling around, they're kind of lost and and uh, confused at that point, and uh, and in that process. Seals and sea lions have discovered that, and they just move in and they just take advantage of these uh, these fish that don't know where the ladder is and how quick to, to get up there, and uh, and they just you know they're decimating the return. They, they, a few years ago, they literally wiped out the uh, uh, you know the return of the uh, uh, rainbow trout that uh, were coming back uh, to the Cedar River. A steelhead, basically, and uh, and they're doing the same to sock, you know, to the both all three species of salmon right now. So the next, the first thing that we we can all do is, uh, you know, the pre people that are in charge of that are NOAA, the National Oceanographic, uh, you know, federal people. Uh, call them, you know, just call them, write them, uh, email them, just say, hey, I fish, I vote, I like salmon, do something, you know, that's all you got to say. And, uh, you know, so anyway, th we need help there. Basically, they've tried to shoot off uh, firecrackers. They've tried to beat on drums. They've, they've actually captured some of the animals, taken them down to, to California, and three days later they appear again. They've tagged them, and, and they know it's the same animals. What needs to be done is eliminate them, you know, just basically harvest the animals and that, that are within an, a, a mile of, of the hatchery so that our salmon can survive. If you do that, you know, the killer whale that are starting to starve are going to survive. The polar bears, it's going to help them out. Eagles, there's a lot of stuff that eat, eat the salmon. You're helping all of them if you, you know, kind of campaign to help reduce the numbers of seals and sea lions at the locks. Uh, the next thing that happens is when they go through the locks and they're trying to come back, they uh, hit warm, the, the, as this global warming thing happens, uh, they hit warm water. Uh, the water between Lake Washington and the and the locks gets too warm during the summer. It it's now get, it's shallow and it gets up to 75, 80 degrees. It's lethal to to salmon. And so the people that need to cool that down are the Army Corps of Engineers. They're kind of in charge of it, but they need to be funded. So the funding part that's going to come from politicians. You know your your mayor of Seattle, your uh, governor of the state of Washington, your your congressmen, your uh, senators, all of these people. Contact them by email. Say, hey, you know, I fish, I uh, uh, I vote, uh, and I like sockeye and and other salmon. Uh, do something. You know, just basically say that kind of stuff. So. Uh, and there's a few other problems. I mean, they they have uh, diseases like. Uh, uh, you know, pre-spawn mortality that they have to do some research on, but, but the returns are doing just terrible. They need some help. I've outlined a, a couple of the major things. Read, I, I've got attached to this, uh, my video, companion articles. Okay, I've written a number of articles on the sockeye issues and, and salmon issues in general in the Lake Washington. Read them. And, uh, you know, and, you know, if you enjoy that kind of thing, you know, we, and, and, you know, again, to, to help us out with the politicians, great. If you want to do it hands-on stuff like I do also, uh, you know, we need uh, volunteers at the hatchery as docents. We need uh, people to help, help harvest some of the fish coming back. And I can even use some people helping with my uh, remote inc uh, salmon incubator. Doing. I've been doing it for well over 20 years. I could use some help. I'm getting tired. <laughs> but anyway... Enjoy your salmon. Uh, I hope, uh, you know, if you want your uh, kids and grandkids to enjoy them too, you got to help us out on this. So uh, any help that you can do, much appreciated. Uh, again, read my articles and, uh, and uh, take a stand. You know, if you want to do something, uh, help us out. And, uh, you know, I hope you that all of us are enjoying salmon for years to come. If you happen to see me out there at the hatchery or something, don't forget to wave.